Give me a little intro there, Gomer. You're listening to the Station 71 podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I'm joined by my co-hosts. Beth. And Brian. So we've got kind of a more lighthearted take on our topic from last week. Um, We're going to be talking about some, I guess, the future of Disney and how Disney could be better, um, especially given the climate that we're in right now. Uh, but we have a lot of news and housekeeping stuff to go over first before we take care of that business. Uh, so let's dive right into it and talk about our news topics this week. So first thing we've got on here is that Goofy's scrumptious cavalcade has debuted for the 2020 Christmas season at Magic Kingdom. Uh, very similarly to what we were seeing with the Halloween cavalcades and the character cavalcades they're doing. That is a very weird tongue twister. Um, <laughs> But they're doing a Christmas version that has some of everyone's holiday favorites like Max driving a gingerbread car and gingerbread men from the Christmas parade. Uh, I like these character cavalcades. Is this like float that Goofy's on and the gingerbread car that Max drives new? Are those have been are they have they been used in? I feel parades. like I've seen that car that Max is driving before. Okay. I I've only not, been to a very merry once, so. My first and only very merry experience was in like 2015, and that feels like forever ago. Yeah. I like how they, they're going to pull Clarabelle back out for <laughs> the holidays and then stuff her back in a closet. Everyone's until next favorite year. character. <laughs> Listen, <Claire> she, gets, <laughs> she gets needlessly uh, poo pooed on. Um, She's so irrelevant, dude. No one cares about Clarabelle. She Put a is. character on there that people are excited about. <laughs> Just let her die. <laughs> <laughs> She's old enough. Put her out to pasture. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, I was a little too slow on that one. Sorry. Uh. There we go. There you go. <laughs> okay, I got you. Um, I don't know. I I feel like they do only bring her out for holidays. Literally, it's that's only it. Christmas. What well, isn't she out for Halloween too? Or she used to be yes. at least. Wait, no, oh, is she, she is in the yeah. Halloween parade. I think she's actually part of. She's part of Move It, Shake It, Mouse Can Dance It too. <laughs> uh. So it's literally just. Parades. Oh God! And Mickey's most merriest celebration, or whatever that terrible stage show is oh, called. She sings yeah. that horrible rendition of the Mariah Carey song. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my God! Oh. So she's really, she's actually pretty active. We're just repressing all the memories of her. Yeah. Ugh. Somebody's gonna tell us that Clarabella is her, their favorite character. <laughs> Now listen, no. I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but I have heard it from a cast member, so you know it's got to be true. Man, that- no, <laughs> okay. no, there might be somebody that likes Clarabelle Cow or tolerates her. That is nobody's favorite No, no, character. no, here's what I was going to say. I have a person, a cast member that told me this, is that the person in like that voiced Clarabelle or voices Clarabelle currently apparently designed a lot of the costumes for the parades and shows and stuff. So that was like her leverage for getting Clarabelle in was like, I'll wow. design this stuff, but you got to put my character in. So like I said, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Cause we all know that cast members like to weave a tail sometimes, but <laughs> that makes more sense to me than her just being there for no reason. Yeah, I think I'd rather just have worse costumes and no clarity. <laughs> uh, she doesn't. Um, she doesn't do anything wrong, though. I don't She's know. Her not voice enjoyable. is very, very annoying to me. Yeah. 
I just think she's irrelevant and it's time to move on. <laughs> oh, but tying this back around, I think this is cool that they're doing some <laughs> Christmas, you know, floats in this cavalcade thing since they can't do parades. It'll bring a, yeah. a bit of a touch to it. So it'll be nice. You know what? I'm going to say this and this is probably a hot take. I know we've had discussion about this on our Discord, but I think they could get away with doing the Christmas cavalcade at least like this year round um, because Very Merry is not as popular as like uh, Not So Scary is. I would be okay with this because I feel like this would put more people in the Christmas spirit to sell more Christmas party tickets. Maybe. I mean, there's no definitive way to tell, but... I mean, I think that what they've been doing, what they did for Halloween and what they're now doing for Christmas does prove that this is just their way to sell an extra ticket. You know, they can do it for regular day crowds, but they choose not to, which I mean, I get it, I guess. At that point, you're really. But if they did start doing it daily, then very merry and not so scary become just Disney after hours where you're paying extra for lower crowds, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I I mean, like, I would be cool if they did something like that. Like, I don't think it's feasible because of how normal guest crowd or normal crowds are. Um, I think the lower crowds allow them to have these kind of like surprise things. But I mean, if they had Goofy Park a gingerbread house on Main Street for a little bit, that would be neat. Mm-hmm. I don't want it all day, but like every so often at random hours, just have a, a little mini thing pop out that would be kind of cool yeah but again that devalues the very merry christmas party ticket and i get that but whatever um (laughs) (laughs) so the next one that we have is i'm not gonna lie i'm a little disappointed at this um and i say that before i i introduce the news story so all of you can be disappointed Uh, The Muppets have returned to Liberty Square for socially distant meet and greets during the Christmas season at Magic Kingdom. And the reason I'm disappointed at this is because this was not any way of Disney saying, oh, we're going to bring the Muppets back. It's Disney's way of saying, hey, look, here's something else that we can do that justifies the ticket price. If you. I I get that. Here's my um, thing with it, though, and I guess not to cut you off before you start, but let me like read the news and then I, I can say whatever or you can say whatever. Um, But the way that they're doing this is it's a socially distanced meet and greet. So there's no actual show. Periodically, Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie and Sam Eagle will pop up in the location that they were at for great moments in history. There's no like in there's little interactions between um the the characters but there's no actual singing to it or not saying speaking to it um from what i've seen they just pop up and they like show up with jingle bells there's like little bits of what looks like them looking at the crowd i don't see any of like the show element that we really enjoyed about great moments in history so they're not really even doing a meet and greet they're just kind of doing a short thing they're just popping up in the windows. Mm, okay. Yeah, I can see that being a bit disappointing. <laughs> and I also don't get what's the difference between doing that and just doing great moments in history. Right. There's, They're not speaking at all? No. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> I see why you said disappointed now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Yeah, man. It's just, I mean, I guess they, if they had people speaking, then they become equity actors, right? Yeah. So Uh, they're trying to avoid that stupidly because this is a really good way to, I don't know, have a socially distanced display. I don't know. They could be doing so much more. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Well, I wonder how much that plays into it, too, the whole equity union thing and them laying off all the equity actors. I wonder if that's the main reason why it's not currently. Yeah. I don't know. I guess that makes sense. 
I just want the Muppets back. That's all I want. I know. Yeah. I need more Muppets. Agreed. The Muppets literally fit anywhere in Disney, and Disney just doesn't use them. I don't get it, man. Like, you're right, because you could pop, plop them down anywhere, and I feel like they're they're an IP that has really, like, transcended generations, that kids nowadays, I think, know the, who the Muppets are. Like, people our age know who the Muppets are, and I feel like the generation before us know who the Muppets are and love them, so why don't they use them? I still think Disney doesn't quite know what to do with them, which is weird because, like, I feel like everybody knows where the Muppets are good, like, pretty much anywhere. You could plop the Muppets down in most places and they'd be fine. But I don't think Disney has quite nailed down what works absolutely for them. Like, Muppets Now was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um... But I don't think Disney had any intention to keep that long form, and they would have burned out so quick if they had tried to force it. And I think that's what, like they've they've had so many projects that just haven't stuck because they haven't quite nailed down what makes the Muppets the Muppets. And I think maybe they're just afraid of that at this point. Man, I just want a reboot of the Muppet Show. I would so love that. What they need to do is what they've done with the mandalorian which is take people who know what they're doing and are really passionate about the content you know what i've said this for so long just make jason seagal in charge of the muppets yes (laughs) yes 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 that's why the 2011 2011 muppets movie was so good yeah yeah and i i put the 2011 muppets movie up there with the original Muppets movie because it just it nailed down so many of the things that the Muppets do right the only grape that I have with that movie is Walter but like even Walter is not that bad like it's it's such a minimal complaint the problem that they had with the movie after that was that they focused way too much on everything but the Muppets like the Muppets were just kind of a plot piece it was a Muppets movie that wasn't really about the Muppets. Right. Like, the cool thing about the Muppets is that, like, they have the, like, you know, kind of off-the-wall cameos and stuff. and that, that, But that's not what makes the Muppet movies, you know? And it felt like that's what they were trying to do with Muppets Most Wanted. It was, well, like, just even, the like, cameos. Yeah. And even Muppets Now kind of nailed down the, the cameos in the perfect way. Like, they mm-hmm. weren't... Everything that... The, every time they had a cameo on Muppets Now... Except for Tay Diggs. He was in there a couple times and it was like, is he a reoccurring character now? <laughs> but um every time they had a like guest appearance on there, it felt like they were just a guest and that's all they needed to be. And that's usually what do like well with the Muppets. What yep. does well with the Muppets. I don't know, we could talk about this all night. I feel like we could <laughs> we could play in a Muppets land for for sure that a whole episode i think that's one of our suggested topics it probably is muppets themed park al suggested that that. we need to do that yeah probably should i need to watch significantly more muppet stuff before we take on that topic you should just do that anyways i mean I, i actually did watch the first episode of muppets now and it was funny that wasn't my favorite thing I did like RuPaul a lot. RuPaul was the best. I think the best guest on. Oh now, yeah, for sure. But I Ru- plan. I plan to continue watching it. RuPaul was such a like a good surprise guest for that show, and he just it was perfect. Yeah. Um. So that just means that we have to play in a, a Muppets Marathon Watch Club. That <laughs> there we go. That's what it comes down to. Wasn't well, our Watch Club for December? Christmas okay. Carol? It is. Oh, yes. Have you seen it, Beth? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Bef- I feel like the way that you were about to say that was, but you know the plot of A Christmas Carol. No, let me no. Just say, no, no, no. You I- don't know the plot of A Christmas Carol. <laughs> I honestly don't. I mean, I know the plot of A Christmas Carol, but I don't even know if I've ever seen the movie for the like the original movie either. Like, I just know what it's about, or like I know the story. Like I've. You know, you read the book growing yeah. up, kind of thing. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm curious. I don't want to give much away. 
if you haven't seen it or don't think you've seen it, but um, it's it's a lot darker movie than you're probably gonna think going into it. Oh, okay. It really is. <laughs> I mean, Man, I can't wait for Christmas December. Christmas Carol's pretty sad. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't want to say anything else because I feel like then we veer into spoiler territory. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do Let's... Mighty Ducks first, though. That's our yeah. November movie. So excited for Mighty Ducks. I love the Mighty Ducks. It's another one I don't think I've seen, honestly. That's a good one. I feel we're, like we're that's finally gonna... watching movies I haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> I know how I feel every decal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, back to our news. The next topic uh, we have on here is that the M&M store has been pushed back to 2021 at Disney Springs. Um, I'm not surprised by this. I don't understand how they expect this store to work in the current COVID environment anyway. It's like a buffet of M&Ms. Yeah, you... Well, you've been to the one in New York, haven't you, Beth? I don't think so. I feel like we talked about that. It's like tubes and you pull the little thing down and it fills up your bag. There's really no sanitary way to do it. Yeah. It's like you have to touch the thing. Right. But I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely going to check it out once it's open and safe to do so because... While I am not as big an Eminem fan as Kirsten is, obviously, no one is as big an Eminem fan as Kirsten is, I do like a good Eminem, and I like trying all of the novelty flavors, Yeah, so I'm hoping that that will be heavily involved. I... This is a store I'm, like, not super excited about because, like I said, there is one in New York, but I... I like the Coke store enough that I think this is, it fits really well. Mm-hmm. And I'm, ex- it, it's one of those things that I'm going to pass by it and be like, yeah, you know what? I'll check out the M&M store this time. Yeah. They also sell a lot of weird, like, I don't know if they're going to do that here, but they sell a lot of weird licensed uh, M&M household goods. Like you could buy a full kitchen set that's M&M themed. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think you made a good parallel there. This is like the world of Coke of M&M's. It's like all the different flavors, because you can go to the Coca-Cola store and buy your whole kitchen set of (laughs) Coca-Cola-themed items. There's a very specific audience that these stores, like, appeal to. Yeah, I mean, M&M's are a pretty inoffensive candy you know, it's like everybody can find one they like, and the plain ones are literally just chocolate. Yeah. So I feel like this will appeal to a broad audience, probably. Yeah, I think this store will do really well there. I agree. So next news topic that we have on here, uh, one that I'm excited to talk about because I love when we talk about food topics. I love food. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there is now a food guide for the 2020 Taste of Epcot International Festival of the Holidays online. Um, Can we first talk about this first picture, though? Yep. This a little... poutine looks disgusting. Oh, I thought you were oh, talking man. about the cake that was on here. I was like, that cake looks delicious, but the poutine looks horrible. It's yeah, literally that... Thanksgiving uh, poutine. Is that like the little crispy onions on top of it? Yeah, yes. like a green so bean the, casserole. The description is turkey poutine french fries with turkey gravy, cranberry relish, and crispy onions. Um, those are chunks of turkey. That's not even like a little bit of shredded turkey on top. That's like major yeah. pieces of turkey. Bro, this looks on, so gross. On paper, <laughs> this sounds good, but after seeing the picture, I'm going to pass on this one. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't eat it anyway because of the meat. But like, honestly, if this was vegetarian, I wouldn't eat it any either. Like, this does not look appealing to me at all. It looks like somebody threw up on top of French fries. Yeah, this, is, this is not plated well. I, well, I feel like that's becoming more of like an American thing. Let's just throw Thanksgiving dinner on stuff and call it a meal. Hey, that's I true. will say the Thanksgiving 
um, like I think they call it the holiday sandwich at Earl of Sandwich is very good, which is kind of the same concept as this, but the uh, the actual execution is much better. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so some of the, the highlights on here, I guess for me specifically, um, that look really good. The orange birch sipper is coming back. We kind of anticipated that because that was a big hit. Um, but the dessert things I think are the most appealing, like the brown sugar stuffed pretzel with soft serve ice cream and chocolate. That looks incredible. It does. Man, this makes me very sad that I didn't get to go to food and wine this year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is good. This is cool. You know, I think this is going to be a good kind of you know, a, a little mini festival celebration type deal for them to do since most people didn't get to do any this year. So I think it'll be nice. Yeah. I, I agree, and I'm actually, this makes me more excited to go, because I feel like when I went for Christmas a couple of years ago, they had these holiday kitchens at Epcot for the International Festival of the Holidays, but it was like 90% holiday loafs, like Yule logs, <laughs> and I'm like, there's only so many Yule logs a person can eat, you know? <laughs> So it's it's exciting to see that they have quite a variety this year. I really want to know if this is going to stick because I would be okay with it. And it feels, part of it feels like it's a lot bigger than stuff like this has been in the past, like you were saying. But I'm not sure if that's because there's just not a lot there right now. Yeah. Um, oh, there does seem like a lot of offerings here. Yeah. And some of these are really good. Like, like the picture is just looks so good this uh cheese fondue in the bread bowl i'm a sucker for a good bread bowl <laughs> mm-hmm, me too cheese and bread give it to me <laughs> there is did- one on here that i scrolled past and i can't find it now but it was a drink and i was like that sounds so simple but i'm so there for that uh i lost so go ahead and say what you were gonna say are either of you I know Brian is a beer drinker. Mario, are you mostly a liquor or wine person or beer? Um, I mean I like depending on what kind of beer it is, I'll drink it. There's certain things that I don't like, but I'm interested I mostly will give everything a try. I'm interested to see if any of these beers catch your guys' eyes because I gotta say eggnog beer sounds kinda weird to me. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, not not interested in that one. Okay, so I was just like, I don't know if it's because I don't like beer or because it's a weird combo. I so I like beer and I like eggnog. I don't think I'd like them together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a um, I'm more of a hard cider person. Like that's the thing that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of those on here that I'm like, ooh, those look good. What about? Peppermint chocolate stout. That sounds disgusting. Yeah. I'd give that a shot. Minty I feel beer? Like, what was it? Minty? Mm, no, I don't think so. This yeah, is I don't peppermint. Know about that. Stuff. Yeah. Well, I feel like stouts, they throw a lot of things in and try to flavor it to different stuff, but it never tastes exactly how I'd expect it to. Like, I've had chocolate peanut butter stout before. I was that just about to say that. Yeah, it doesn't taste anything like chocolate peanut butter. It tastes good, I mean, but not like chocolate peanut butter. Mm-hmm. All I've ever tasted in the ones that I've had is like a slight peanutty taste. And that's- yeah. <laughs> they sure do have a lot of cookies on here. I mean, I guess it's Christmas, so it makes sense. Well, they're the flowing them stroll. over from... The flowing them over from Magic Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, we don't have a Christmas party this year. Got to get rid of them somehow. Yeah, there's a melon breeze with spiced rum on here. That was the thing that I was like, that sounds so simple but so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, excited. I I will definitely be trying a handful or more of these items. 
Let me ask you guys this, because every time I see this, I get a little bit more confused. Why do they try to make Spike the Bee a thing that outside of flower and garden? Because they have too much leftover Spike the Bee <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That, that's I think that's the correct answer. Yeah, <laughs> probably. But I saw this one here. It was like frozen Coca Cola slushy or Minute Maid lemonade in a souvenir Spike the Bee sipper cup. That Dude, is and there's not even anything percent left over from Flower and Garden. Slash. For sure, there's not even Christmas theme Spike yeah. the Bee. It is literally just him. So, oh yeah. yeah, that and the Orange Bird sipper are both from Flower and Garden. Yep. But I feel like Orange Bird at least makes sense because there are people that care about him. Yeah. Does it in Epcot though? Sure, it does. does he, well, how, how do maybe they not really outside use him of Flower and Garden? It's not thematically very good, but like people care a lot more about Orange Bird than they do about Spike the Bee. Spike sure. the Bee that's, is that's like true. the Walmart version of <laughs> <laughs> Orange Bird. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Is he the LaCroix orange bird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you, you go in another room and yell orange bird. <laughs> That's Spike the Bee. You're so mean to Spike the Bee. <laughs> I mean, what is he from like an old short, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, I mean, I guess my thing is. Why did we need Spike the Bee? Because Orange Bird is perfect for flowering garden and everyone loves him. So why do we need Spike the Bee? Why did you try to bring in com like competition? To sell merchandise? Additional is merchandise? It, is it working though? <laughs> no, clearly. So. <laughs> Man, the, the Orange Bird sippers were like, not this past flower and garden, obviously, because it didn't really happen. But the one before were sold out a lot of the times. You couldn't even get them because they were so popular. Yeah. Like the orange bird sipper I would put on my shelf after I've done using it. Spike's going in the trash. When I finish that tree. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's exactly it. Spike is around so that when Disney sells out of the orange bird sippers, they can be like, no, but we have Spike the Bee and... Kids are going to be like, who the heck is that? Yeah. <laughs> and disappointment ensues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess that'll bring us to our housekeeping now that we've talked about the news for a half hour. <laughs> yeah. That was some, uh, some good news, though. Lots, yeah. of, lots of stuff to talk about this week. Surprisingly. But, but we did want to give our, of course, shout out to a couple of new patrons one being Matt, who was on our game night episode, and he helped me secure the one win that I got, other than, of course, well, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't listened to it, but Matt helped me win, and I really appreciate that in one of our mini games, and also a warm welcome to our new patron, Frankie, who has also recently joined our Discord, so we're happy to have you guys here, and hope that you are enjoying all of the content that you've unlocked on patreon we have almost 30 hours of exclusive content on there now wow yeah it feels like we haven't even been doing it that long we already have that much built up Mm-hmm. that's a lot sweet <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys ready to talk about this week's topic let's do it all right. So we decided after last week's discussion, I think this was actually kind of last minute recommended to us in our Discord by, let me pull up the suggestion. Uh, the user TayIce44 um, recommended that we talk about kind of like the direction that entertainment is going in the parks, um, especially given like the recent climate of Walt Disney World's entertainment department um, and just kind of talk about like our opinions on it. And I think this is going to turn more into a not necessarily a blue sky episode, but more of us talking about what we'd like to see and things that could maybe improve uh, a little bit more of a lighthearted take from the negativity that we had last week. So I guess let's start with what our thoughts are on the entertainment as it is right now. <laughs> Or lack thereof. Well, first of all, I just want to say that from a business standpoint, you can't deny that 
keeping all these people on the hook was not great for the company. But I don't understand why did they get rid of some of the, especially the entertainment people that they could be using right now. Like, they got rid of the Grand Floridian Orchestra. They And, you know, obviously they renamed them to the Disney Friends Society Orchestra. And then they were using them. And then they're just like, nah, we're done with that. But nothing else is happening in that theater. You know, why did they do stuff like that when they could have continued to let not only give let these people have their jobs that they've had forever, but also be offering something to guests in the parks? Well, how many people were actually stopping to watch? The, I, the when orchestra? I stopped and watched, it was actually a lot more people than I expected. It wasn't a full theater. Obviously, social distancing had to be in place as well. But it was right. a it was a big group, and I don't know if it, I just hit it at a you know happened to be in a crowded one or if that was what they were regularly bringing in, but I don't know. I just feel like the option being there was nice. How many people go and see that Beauty and the Beast stage show? You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm I see where you're coming from with that too. I just at for the sake of this discussion, I wanted to like kind of look at it from a business perspective, like at least with what you're saying right now. Um, and I, I don't necessarily see the con for keeping them there other than having to pay somebody extra, but yeah. I don't know. I just feel like the more options that people have like that, the bet, like the better impression they're going to have of their overall trip, especially during COVID times, because in a bunch of groups that I'm in, there's so much feedback about how Disney parks have lost their magic. There, you know, there's not as much magic as it used to be because coronavirus has ruined everything and blah, 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 and all this doom and gloom. But I feel like if we had, you know, stuff like the Grand Floridian or the Disney Friends Society Orchestra, and then you had also like another set of like how they've been doing these character cavalcades and just random pop-up meet and greets here and there that adds a lot to your trip because there's so much missing right now but it's like an unexpected magic that happens upon you and it feels more special i think yeah i don't know i well i, I wholeheartedly agree with that it's the same thing with the dapper dan's like why what is that hurt and that's a, a thing that a lot of people really love about the parks yeah and i mean disney has come out and said that they're gonna try and bring a lot of these people back eventually but i don't know it just doesn't well, feel good yeah and it's a lot of bad, bad um from an optics standpoint we talked a little bit about that last week about how it's not super great looking when it comes down to it but mm -hmm. i get it um i guess that begs the question of like when they bring them back what do you think is likely to come back i think just throwing this out there out of the gate i think monsters inc laugh floor is done <laughs> i do too unfortunately Probably. they took I, the sign down here's the thing with that though i think that was on the chopping block and they were like yeah this is a good excuse let's just get rid of it the yeah. thing that kills me though is like they ripped it out, they rip stitch out, and there's nothing there. And I don't know, I, like I, it seems like those are two fairly low cost to run attractions. That if you don't have anything to put there yet, just leave them. Yeah, and I, I can't remember if I said this on the last episode but like how many cast members do we really think it takes to run monsters in glass floor i mean honestly i would say probably between four and five how many yeah. did it take to run stitch two like yeah. why are they ripping these attractions out with nothing in place mm -hmm. mm. i feel like it took less cast members to run stitch's great escape than it did the stitch meeting yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> it's, yeah, it probably is. I I don't know. I un, I kind of understand Stitch's Great Escape because that like ranked so negatively on guest feedback. Even looking at reviews and stuff now 
and it's gone. It doesn't look great. Yeah, I but like kind of- people are going to the parks right now and the crowds, you know, and the lines are going so quickly, or at least they were when I was there. You get bored and you're like ready to leave after a few hours. There's like not enough to do. Some like That's such a weird statement to say. It was very weird, but it just I don't know. I feel like if there was more to do then people would feel like quote unquote they got their money's worth. You know, that's a lot of people the way that they look at their Disney trip is did I get my money's worth? And I feel like a lot of people don't feel like that right now because you're paying a hundred plus dollars to get into a park and then you do everything you want to do in three or four hours. You know? Even if nobody, even if you don't like Stitch's Great Escape, like I was saying earlier, the option would be nice. Yeah, and I, you know, I've said it before, I didn't necessarily hate Stitch's Great Escape. Was it the best attraction? No, but I I will admit I wrote it purely out of having the option to ride it. Like, it was there. It was an extra thing to do. And I think Monsters in Glass Floor, more specifically, is something that I, I've done, I guess not even more recently, but more often just because I had the option to do it or because it was there. And I feel like that still drew a decent enough crowd. Yeah. And And it's genuinely entertaining too. Yeah. Every time I did it, I always was like, why do I not do this more often? Like it is, it's fun. You know, you get some dumb humor, which I love. So, and it kind of changes every time. So you really get a new experience. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, the big thing with monsters and glass floor is that theater is massive. Mm-hmm. Like they could have easily social distanced that, but they didn't want to. Yeah. At least that's how it felt. I don't know. I mean, I guess those are equity actors too. So I guess, um, but out of all of that stuff, what do you think is coming back for sure? Obviously the parade is going to come back at some point the my gosh why am i blank festival of fantasy i was totally blanking on the name that's got to come back eventually i don't see it happening anytime soon because of how big of a crowd it draws um i think the beauty and the beast stage show is done for probably i kind of hope it is i think it needs to to say that yeah i think it needs to be gone it's very outdated and well, whatever. I here's the thing: how much would it cost to update it? Probably not a ton. I mean, I know Disney's not going to update anything that isn't on the table for the next couple of years. I think that's where we're at right now: is they've lost so much money. Anything that wasn't already pre-approved or ready to roll is mm-hmm. not getting an update. I think more than that, it's going to be anything that wasn't like an e-ticket level attraction is going to get put on hold. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff that was some of these minor little pop-up stage shows and all that kind of stuff that were in work that are still going to get put on hold. Yeah, I could see that. What about uh, Finding Nemo the Musical? You that think that's has coming back? to come back. I think it will. There's That actually, you know, th- that has a ton of money invested in it, and it's very good. Yeah, I and Festival that, of the Lion King as well. Yeah, I mean, they draw large numbers of crowds, and it's something that you can do for, like, kind of an extended period of time at the park. Mm-hmm. They're great for people that have small children that want them to, you know, kind of come and sit down and relax, but also be entertained for, you know, 45 minutes. So yeah, yeah, I I think those need to come back for sure. I would love a, uh, kind of mini Broadway style, almost similar to finding Nemo, the musical to replace beauty and the beast live on stage. I don't know what I would want there though. That's the problem. I think I'm stuck with. You know what I think would work, and I think you would agree with me, is I'd love to see something Hercules-themed like that with a stage show. Yeah. My only problem with that is I think Disney doesn't care about Hercules enough, even though Hercules is about to hit Broadway again. So if it does well, I guess maybe they'll eventually decide to care about it again. I 
I would love that though. I think that theater is actually perfect for it. Yeah, I would love to see that as well. And like you said, hopefully the success. I didn't realize it was coming back to Broadway, but if that's successful, maybe that will inspire. Whenever Broadway opens. <laughs> I was about to say, eventually. Um, I, you know, kind of to bounce off of that, I wonder if Disney would put Aladdin in that theater. Hmm. Because, what was that? I think that would work. Yeah, and I I know that there was talks about putting a filmed version of the Broadway musical on Disney Plus, which, um, because well, that was the whole thing was that they had a recorded version of it. I think I remember reading that there was a recorded version of the Broadway version of Aladdin with the original or the original London cast, and. It was going to hit Disney Plus before Hamilton, but then they pushed it back when they moved Hamilton up. And I don't think we've ever heard anything since then. Uh, I'm, you know I'm going to look this up now because I feel like I just talked out of my ass. But. <laughs> <laughs> I would, while you look that up, I would really like to see an Aladdin kind of like stunt stage show. I think that would Ooh, be that cool. That would be fun. Cool. Yeah. I like that idea. I mean, you know, they have on in the past on all these Disney cruise ships, they've had these little mini Broadway productions. Yep. They could just copy one of those over. And they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that too. I've heard that they're like phenomenal. I was like I I've told y'all before, I'm not a huge musical person and these things were I I mean like literally I was like getting emotional in some of them like like they were that good and I'm not big into musicals and I'm not generally a very emotional person, I don't think. So yeah, they're definitely top notch, really good stuff. I also think Disney Broadway just hits a little differently. That might be it. I also think we're <laughs> trying to turn Brian into a musicals person. <laughs> I, I don't mean, know. It's, 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 it might be happening. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't even know how many times I've listened to the Hamilton soundtrack now. So, oh, you know what'll do it? You need to see the Lion King. That'll oh, be it. Oh boy! <laughs> I bet it will, because that was—I mean, that was like my favorite movie as a kid growing up. So, I will say I've seen plenty of Broadway musical, and the Lion King is my absolute favorite. I think that that's just. That's one they couldn't put on Disney Plus because you need to see it in a theater. Hmm. Yeah. I've actually never seen the play. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. A little little, uh, Broadway shame of mine. I mean, I also feel like it's kind of easy to miss those because you're probably going for something else if you're going to go see a play. But The Lion King's really good. That's definitely top. I would actually... Well, no, that would probably fit better in Animal Kingdom if they were going to do some kind of Lion King stage show, which maybe, maybe I guess like festival, festival Lion King. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, I love Festival of the Lion King, and I feel like that's such a, a great um, low-cost interactive performance for families. Yeah. There's no way that that can't come back. Yeah, it's got to. I mean, they, they're, again, there's so much money dumped into it with the floats, the theater, you know, obviously all the, the, the trained actors. Yeah, I think it would definitely be one to come back. Well, well the, the Brian, floats let's didn't not really... For, I was about to say, <laughs> let's not forget the floats actually came from a parade. Well, yeah, but I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, get, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. It's... It really is a low cost thing for them to run and it should feasibly be easy enough to bring back. Now, what's something from these like these shutdowns that if they ditched those performers would not be able to come back? Like Yeehaw Bob is a big one that I think if they were to ever try to replace him with anybody no. else, it just wouldn't be the same. No, no he's Yeehaw no Bob. Way. Right. Yeah. 
this is not just saying because we had him on and he was a fantastic guest and everything, but just yes, he is he is that show. There's no replacing him. Yeah, you can't replace a character like that. Definitely not. I almost wonder if he will come back. Like, dude, he better. <laughs> Why does anybody go to the River Roost Lounge? That's true. Like, it's just going to become like... one of those lounges at a resort that sits empty most of the time if, if he yes. doesn't come back. For sure. Like, it's not even like. Yeah, really. Other than him being there, there's there's not even really like theming there or anything to draw people in. He needs to come back for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what about Jelly Rolls? Has that reopened? I can't imagine it has. I know we're getting out of the parks now. Well, Yeehaw Bob's already out of the parks, so. Yeah, it's temporarily unavailable, so. Yeah, that's one that makes sense, though. I feel like the small... Ooh. Excuse me. The small lounges and stuff, are they're just not going to open for a while. Yeah. Um. I almost feel like... Even... Well, the Dapper Dans, I feel like they could... I, I hate to say this, but I feel like they're probably easy enough that they could replace them. Not with a different style of thing but there's enough people that would want to be the dapper dans that would come on yeah plus they were already interchanging you know it wasn't the same dapper dans every single time yeah i think the grand floridian orchestra that's one that wouldn't really be the same i mean i don't know even that almost feels like they could probably plop a new orchestra in there and it wouldn't i hate to say that i really hate to say that i know what you mean though it's like when you have someone like Yeehaw Bob that's such a character and has such a personality that, of his own, and then you have these, you know, like I said, almost interchangeable acts, I feel like those are a lot easier to, like, obviously interchange people in. Yeah. Now, my other question, I guess this is more of a lighter note question. If Disney said all right, we're bringing entertainment back. Um, Some of the entertainment options have gone, but we don't quite, you know, have a definitive of what it is. Uh, But they said, let's put in a new form of entertainment somewhere. No strings attached. You could put whatever you want in. What is there anything that like you would do any kind of performance that you would want to see specifically in the parks? Or just anywhere that really feels like you need it, like Streetmosphere, for example, or you know maybe more stage shows. I I would really like to see more walk around characters, kind of like Push or Lucky, mm-hmm. and I think those are pretty easy, low cost things to develop, and you know you don't really have to sink that much time in it. I mean, stuff like like Push. I mean, it's a remote control trash can with a speaker in it you know it's like (laughs) that's such a i mean on paper it's like super easy low cost development but look how popular he became like yeah i would really love to see more innovation like that yeah yeah i totally agree i also on that note when it's safe to do so would like to see more of what they're doing right now where they have characters like costume characters just randomly show up you know Mm -hmm. Because I feel like everyone knows what time the parade is. Everyone knows what time the fireworks are, what time the stage shows are. So those things are things you can plan. And that's great for the people who this is their once in a lifetime or once in a while trip. Because you know you're going to get value at this time, this time, and this time. But for people like us that go regularly... You want something fresh and new. You want something unexpected. You want to just be walking through Adventureland and look up and see one of the country bears on a balcony waving at people and stuff like that. And I mean, even for the people that plan a lot, I still think they would get a lot out of being surprised by something like that, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, when I was there at the beginning of September and we went to Epcot, 
we were just walking from Future World to World Showcase and just a, one of the cavalcades just happened to come by and Mickey and Minnie were in their little car waving at people and I was like oh this is so awesome and exciting like you never see this especially in World Showcase you know like I really like that they've done stuff like that in places that didn't have stuff before especially because it's I, exciting to me because I'm not used to it yeah you know I'm gonna say this and I, I know that I'm not the demographic for what I'm about to say I would be okay with getting the axe for I would almost say I would be happy with them subbing out character meet and greets for permanent cavalcades. I think I'm down there's with that. not even like all of them, but like cut a handful of them to pull the performers to a cavalcade where you can drive a car through and have them wave at guests. It's a more magical experience than just walking through and seeing a line to meet Snow White. Like having on a drive by in a car and wave at you is like, Oh, okay. Remember that time we saw that thing? Like that's so much more of a, a magical experience. Well, yeah. I feel I, think- I feel like I wouldn't want them to completely replace meet and greets, even though I'm not someone who does meet and greets a lot. The ones that I have done have been like very memorable moments for me. Yeah, I mean, maybe cut a few of them just to pull the actors is what I, I'm thinking would be the ideal solution. Yeah. Although. Meet and greets do have a, a large crowd pull, so I don't think Disney's ever going to get rid of them. Yeah, I and mean, I think it would just be a, it would be good to have both because you have people who you know they want to get their picture with Mickey, and or Anna and Elsa or whatever, but then you also have people who don't like character meet and greets and they find it awkward and uncomfortable and waving at them from afar is a cool thing to them not having to actually have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, that's also a symptom of the, the, at least for me, I've always been jealous that Disneyland has walk around characters and not stationary meet and greets because it feels more like I happened upon that character. And that to me, like I said, feels more magical. Yes. But I feel like at the same time, Disney World's clientele doesn't cater to that, and I, I feel like we've touched on that maybe a little bit here. Um, but I feel like I, Disney World also used to do that. Yeah. Like, even within my time of going, which has only been within the past, like, 10 years that I've been going regularly, I remember just when uh, the Streets of America was a thing, I was just walking, <laughs> and Stitch was just hanging out. Like, not listed anywhere on, you know, the Times Guide. He was just chilling. I was like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And just no line, just grabbed a quick picture with him and gave him a hug. And I love stuff like that. And like you said with Disneyland, how magical it was for me to be in New Orleans Square and turn around and see Dr. Facilier just walking around. I was just like, I was like starstruck. Oh, my God. Should I go get a picture with him? You know, it's exciting to have those unexpected moments. Do you think Disney could feasibly do that in like a post COVID world? I think so, because if it's not scheduled, then you just pick a spot that uh, not a lot of people are going to walk by. And then if it gets crowded, the character attendant takes the character away. Yeah. You know, it might make a couple of people unhappy that, you know, didn't get their chance, but it's reason for them to come back and try again. And then Disney gets even more of their money. Yeah, it's true. I wonder if, like, they could feasibly do it where it wouldn't have such a, an impact on crowds. Like, you know, Dr. Facilier walk out into part of World Showcase and then all of a sudden there's a crowd around him because he's not out as often. Like, I, that's the only thing I could see holding them up. But I don't, I don't know if that would even be too much of an issue. But, I mean, even when I went in February before covid was a really a thing in the united states it was just a random day and chicken little and abby mallard were just hanging out (laughs) doing a meet and greet randomly and those are characters that hardly ever come out and i was like well i definitely got to get a picture with them and it cost a little bit of a line but it wasn't insane and it was right at the front of the you know front of main street so i think i think it's doable it's just a matter of if Disney will do it eventually. Obviously, we can't do it right now. I understand that, but 
one day. Give it a try. Yeah. I would also... I, almost... I guess similarly, I would like to see more stage shows. I know I said that before, like... Finding Nemo the Musical or Festival of the Lion King. Like, give me higher budget than Beauty and the Beast live on stage. Yeah. I mean, that show is super old. So if they did put something new in there, I feel like it would automatically be a step up because it would be newer props and newer technology and I, I don't I don't think the age of that show is 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 like I don't think you can pin how bad that show is just on how old it is. Well Yeah. Not entirely, but I feel like its age has a lot to do with it. It's like creepy life size costume characters weren't as creepy back then maybe hey what beauty and the beast came out in 89 right i don't know when the stage show started but they have better technology than shaking a blanket back then so. <laughs> <laughs> this is fair uh, and then i guess my other question is what do we think the future of nighttime entertainment is now that there's no chance of us getting a, a parade anytime soon. And obviously most of the shows are shut down aside from the ones that function without actors. Man, I, I, I don't think there is one until, you know, COVID's under control. Does, what could you do that doesn't cause people to gather in numbers? Yeah. I still think they could do, it, well, it's yeah. something where you can you have seated arrangements. Yes, anything that's in an open area of the park that you have to rely on people spacing themselves out isn't going to work. I think two, so like during the busy season, and one regularly, typically. I don't know if you could pull off three shows a night that feels like a lot yeah but if they did more than one show a night they could easily do it to the point that everybody that would want to see it would want to see it you just have to would put like six feet between a party and make sure that everybody's distance like put the proper spacing out there make sure that everybody's okay and what difference is it than being in a queue with somebody for an hour for a flight of passage well, I think the problem with doing Phantasmic three times a day is that it has to be dark outside. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I, I don't so know if it's feasible think, to do that. I don't think they have enough time to in between shows to do, because I think it's normally like six and eight or something like that mm. when they do two shows. And it's six as in like right now, six o'clock where it gets dark at 530. Um. So if they were going to do three a day, then they would have to do, what, six, eight, and ten? But the park's not staying open that late, and you can't do it at four because it's not dark yet. You I know wonder what I mean? if the parks would stay open if they had something like that. I feel like one of the big reasons they close early now is because they don't have any nighttime entertainment for people to stick around for. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I would definitely go to a 10 o'clock Fantasmic. I'm just saying. <laughs> Would you pay more for a Phantasmic after hours? Honestly, right now, yes. <laughs> Being so deprived of it, I would. I don't know if I normally would, but... But honestly, you know, I hate to say that as a potential idea, but that would be a way that they could do fireworks or nighttime spectaculars with social distancing if you did a ticketed event and it was like... All right, you get to be here from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., and it's the only time you can see fireworks right now. I feel like people would pay extra for that. I think so. Probably. I don't want to suggest it, and Disney think that that's what the standard is from now on. You know what I mean? But it would work, I think. 
but then it would a temporary thing could become a permanent thing and then you have to pay to see fireworks and that would suck not that I'm even a huge fireworks person but you know I don't like when, well, when things that you get included become paid for yeah I don't that's that's my big thing is I hate when Disney does stuff like that and they do that a lot so um I let me let me pose this question to you too so we're doing the the fair and equal exchange of all all of these types of shows are off the table right now because of covid so phantasmic you've got rivers of lights not performing we don't have the chance of a nighttime parade um if disney said okay covid's over we're gonna start revamping these nighttime entertainment options um fireworks can stay because they've served us well through covid but these stage shows we haven't done them long enough the equipment's worn down we you know whatever we're going to revamp all of them would you want them to revamp phantasmic for the exchange of getting a better rivers of light um i mean i wouldn't mind if they did some refurbishment to phantasmic as long as they keep the theming of the show i feel like that's the most important part to me it's like the you know moral of the story being imagination and the power of your imagination if they kept that and the same vibe i mean it really doesn't i don't think need a whole lot of refurbishment the main problem i have is the water screens you know no, the main problem i have is the pocahontas section <laughs> uh, i mean it's whatever i don't think it's terrible but I mean, I wouldn't mind if they if they changed it out for some a few newer movies or whatever. But I think, yeah, I would I would take a refurbishment, but they would need to uh, keep the overall vibe and theming. That's fair. I don't know. I didn't have too much else planned in the way of like things I would want to do. The only thing that I really, really hope they decide is worth it is Streetmosphere. I hope that comes back in, in any capacity possible. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I am uh, longing for a day where not only the more recent people who've gotten let go get to come back, but also the people that were let go before, like Sergio... I think back. I think the World Showcase ones have to come back. Like That's you're missing so much. Pavilion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, do you guys have any anything else you want to talk about in the way of entertainment options and whatnot before we wrap this week up? No. Okay. Well, Main I'm good Street to wrap Electrical it up here. Parade. Okay, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. <laughs> I I would bring Main Street Electrical back. I miss Main Street Electrical in a weird, maybe hostage situation type of way. <laughs> Then that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Station 71 podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you want to keep in touch with us, you can find links to all of our social media on our website at www.station71podcast. If you want to keep up with us on Facebook, we're at facebook.com backslash Station 71 pod, Twitter at Station 71 podcast, Instagram at Station 71 pod. You can email us at Station 71 podcast at gmail.com and get in on the conversation with our Discord chat at bit.ly backslash s71chat. We hope you enjoyed your ride, and we'll see you real soon.